The Bastard Pack has returned to AEW. This is your review. What's up, Maniacs? My name is Mex. I'm a wrestling fan. I'm a wrestling enthusiast. I am a WrestleManiac, if you will. And today we are talking about AEW Dynamite. It was the fallout show after the great pay-per-view that was Full Gear on the weekend. And we've got kind of the beginnings of new angles that came out of Full Gear. So we're going to touch upon everything that happened on the show and in regards to that. And we do have a major return. So, guys, if you want to hear everything that happened, stay tuned. Right here at WrestleManiac UK, I discuss everything that is WWE and AEW. So, if this sounds like the place for you, make sure you click the subscribe button and make sure you click the notification bell as well. So, you get notified every time I drop a new video. Ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, let's get into the review. And the show started off with... Matt Seidel versus Brian Cage. This was a very, very good match. A lot of fast-paced action. One of my favourite spots in the match, Brian Cage. He is bicep curling Matt Seidel like he's a kid, like he's a child. I can do that, but my son is, you know, bloody one years old or something, you know? How can he do this to a whole man? He is massive. And obviously, Brian Cage is always trying to show that he can hang with the smaller guys, the faster guys, um, despite the size of him. Um, really, really good match. Matt Seidel as well put on a really good performance. And I, I, these lot do have a lot of chemistry. Um, in the end, Brian Cage got the win. But it was a really strong way to um, get this show get this show started. So um, it was, this wasn't the last we saw of Team Taz on the show. They did come up in the next segment as well. And, you know, just talking about the next segment, it was Cody Rhodes coming out. And Cody Rhodes came out very respectful. Again, he congratulated Darby Allen for beating him on the weekend, becoming the new TNT champion. He did say that I'm not going to challenge um, Darby Allen for now for the championship. You know, um, I won't be kind of putting into action my rematch clause, as it were, um, and that he's moving on. And he did mention that he wants MJF, the newest member of the Inner Circle. Obviously, they had a feud right at the beginning of AEW Dynamite, like a year ago now. So he wanted to kind of reignite that, I guess. Um, he was doing his whole promo when all of a sudden we had a debut. Um a young lady going by the name of Jade Cargill. She's been in the, the ringside area and in the crowd for some weeks now, for quite a while. And she just kind of waltzed her way into the ring. And she was just on some, you know, took the mic from Cody, um, introduced herself, of course. And she said that she had like a giant or something like that's coming to back her up or um, there's a basically a debut that she was um, uh, teasing is the word, I guess. It wasn't very clear, hence why I'm kind of stuttering. I'm just thinking about what was it that was going on here. It was like she was teasing a debut of somebody. So maybe she she is a competitor herself, but maybe she is going to be um, a valet or manager for somebody new that's coming. She left the ring and got onto like the podium bit, the stage outside the ring, and then dropped the name Shaq as the giant, as this person that's going to be debuting. Um, okay. <laughs> like, obviously Shaq has shown his interest in wrestling, um, not necessarily in wrestling in terms of actually doing wrestling, but, you know, we've seen him pop up before um, in the WWE, and he was backstage at Full Gear as well. So, Maybe he is coming to try his hand at wrestling, um, but he's definitely, he's been mentioned. He's been mentioned by, like I say, Jade Cargill, and maybe she's going to be his valet going forward. Um, just before she makes her exit, Brandy Rhodes comes out of one of the tunnels, and Brandy Rhodes went off on Jade. Like, literally, you know, who do you think you're talking to? That's my man. Blah, blah, blah. I don't want to see you around here again. Come off my ring. Come off my stage. Um, Brandy went off 
off on her. But Jade wasn't phased at all. Even when Brandy like turned around to kind of make her exit, there was a cheeky slap on the ass or squeezed um Jade squeezed Brandy's bum. Like it was it was really cheeky. I liked it. Um a lot of people are saying online that you know Jade fluffed up and the promo and all of that kind of stuff. Like, take it easy, guys. She's new to the business. Um this was her first, you know, TV bit of action, you know. So I think she's done very well. I think um, the the actual maybe wording, the dialogue and the actual point of the segment didn't really come across, especially to myself. Um, let me know down below um, in the comments if it's any clearer to you what's actually going on here. But I guess it, she's teasing the debut of Shaq. Um, and she, like I say, she's going to be some type of manager. But yeah, I don't think that's necessarily her fault. Um, maybe there was a couple of nerves there, but generally I thought she she done well and um, she looked like a million dollars herself. Like I wouldn't mind if it was her coming in and basically asking, look, I want to join this division. What do I have to do sort of thing? Like that's what I was kind of expecting. I didn't know she would be kind of teasing somebody else. But um, yeah, it was, it was a good segment. Um, Brandy carried it a lot when she came in with her energy. Um, and yeah, it looks like... Um, and in fact, I forgot, sorry, it actually ended by Brian Cage running into the ring and Brian Cage attacked Cody. Um, obviously, Cody was, or should I say the FTW guys, had a bit of an issue with Cody and Darby following on from Full Gear. So it looks to me that we are going to get, um, and I think they announced it, in fact, yeah, next week is going to be Cody Rhodes, and Darby Allen versus Ricky Starks and Brian Cage um, in a tag match, probably be the main event of the show next week. So that should be pretty interesting. Um, really good segment, like I say. There's a, there's a, there's a lot in it. Um, next up, we had a bunkhouse match. Uh, the Natural Nightmares, so that's Dustin Rhodes and QT Marshall, versus um, The Butcher and The Blade with Bunny. This is my match of the week. Should I say match of the week? Or at least match of the night. Obviously, AEW and NXT. This was definitely the best match on the night, um, on the show. Brilliant. This is a no disqualification match. For those that didn't know what a bunkhouse match was, um, I didn't know before before the match. It's a bunkhouse. A bunkhouse match was like it had all kind of... Um, old school should i say cowboy like a farmyard kind of setting there was a lot of hay there was a lot of um there was cowbells there was chains there was um just odd odd bits and bobs that you would find in like a farm <laughs> that's the only way i can really de describe it um but it was good you had the right level of um action the right level of violence there was blood qt marshall was busted open blade was busted open um it was a really really well put together match and um even we had one spot in it where dustin put um the butcher through like some bedded plywood area with a bulldog um and then obviously the main story being told here was the whole you know what bunny had done to qt marshall in terms of maxing out his credit cards playing him and all that kind of stuff so it was really good to see in the end we saw a big spot from a very tall ladder qt marshall delivering an elbow drop um onto the blade um and eventually he hit a cutter on um the blade a diamond cutter um and pinned him so the natural nightmares kind of have won this feud or i'm sure this will be the end of this feud um with bunny in the middle sort of thing very very good match you guys um if you haven't seen it um this is a one match this week you definitely want to go and watch very very enjoyable and well done to all the guys involved next up MJF, he beat Chris Jericho on the weekend at Full Gear. So he's now a member of the Inner Circle. So before we get into the induction ceremony, guys, if you're enjoying this review, please remember to hit the thumbs up button. Give us a like. It's thoroughly appreciated right here at WrestleManiac UK. And it does loads for the channel. So if you're enjoying the review, smash the like button. MJF, Inner Circle induction. This didn't work for me. This didn't work for me. So obviously they brought out Chris Jericho. Chris Jericho introduced uh, the rest of the inner circle. And then Chris Jericho introduced the man that they were inducting. The one that got the win over him at Full Gear, MJF and Wardlow. Now, for me, 
I mean, you guys can put your opinions in the comments. An induction is you trying to kind of tell them what to expect in the business, in the company, in the new settings that they're coming into. You know, um, there was none of that. There was just a podium in the ring, which MGF was just saying, you know, how hard he's worked to get to this point and everything he's going to bring to the inner circle and stuff like that. And it was just a bit, well, we've kind of seen bits of this before and it just didn't seem to have any real oomph in it. Um, there was a part where MJF was kind of giving us some spiel about something. And all t I, I even recognized it when I was listening to it. He was saying Drake's bars for whatever he was saying. They were Drake's bars. And Ortiz came out and said, this is Drake's bars. He said, no, it isn't. And then he ended um, that little segment with um, started from the bottom. Now I'm here. And I guess everyone knows that. So, um, yeah, he was reciting Drake. Um I guess that might have been the most humorous part of this whole thing. It kind of finished with MJF revealing that he has um, got tickets to Las Vegas for all of the inner circle. Um, just let it be noted as well, Sammy Guevara wasn't here, as in in this segment. So I thought that Sammy Guevara was still selling the... Um, the the match with Matt Hardy, you know, the compound match he had with Matt Hardy, the elite deletion match. However, it turned out that he had just been not been updated at to as to where to be for this segment. He was told to go to the beach, um, while the rest of the inner circle were told to be in the ring. So obviously, Sammy Guevara is still knocking heads a lot with MJF. Sammy Guevara and Ortiz don't want MJF in the inner circle. However, next week, um, I guess we're all going to be live from Las Vegas watching whatever MJF and the Inner Circle guys are up to in Las Vegas. Um, like I said, this is this was just a bit... Mm. And again, that's just my opinion. I'd love to hear what you guys thought about it. But I just feel, you know, if this was WWE and this fell flat, you know, everyone would be going crazy. Um, I'm yet to kind of really delve online and see what people have said about this segment. So they might be going crazy, but AEW tend to get away with these kind of segments when they don't hit more than WWE. That's just my opinion. But um, yeah, it was, it was okay, but nowhere near the kind of stuff where we've come to expect from these guys. And, you know, they're allowed to have an, an off night, I guess, but um yeah, let's move on. And we had Scorpio Sky versus Sean Spears. Now, this was a match where I believe we were supposed to get this last week. Um, was there rumours of Scorpio Sky and some COVID-related accident? Because if so, I don't know why he was back so soon. But I'll leave that to anyone that might have speculated that. Um, this was a pretty pretty decent match as well i don't think it was anything spectacular i think we all knew it was just a moment of you know we're waiting for the moment where sean spears would put the the steel slug into his glove and use it as a weapon um to get the one over on scorpio sky and that's that's exactly what happened you know tully um sean's manager caused the distraction Sean loaded up the glove and eventually hit Scorpio Sky over the head with it, pinned him and got the win. Um, you guys know I'm a Scorpio Sky fan. I want Sean Spears to do well as well, but I'm a, I do like Scorpio Sky. I want him to be getting a more prominent position. What kind of confuses me with Scorpio Sky um, or how they're booking Scorpio Sky? They said on commentary, he has the third best win record in AEW um, behind maybe Kenny Omega and I think Cody Rhodes. So why is he not being treated like that? Like he is the third biggest winner, so to speak, on AEW. Yes, a lot of those wins have probably come on dark. But if you're going to mention it, make it mean something, you know? Make it count for something. Um, and right now, he can't even beat Sean Spears. And that's no insult to Sean Spears. Like I said, I want him to do well. I like Sean Spears. But you can't just mention things like that and then treat someone another way. You know, third biggest win record on AEW. I think that's something to treat with some type of respect. Um, however, it doesn't seem like it's going that way. And 
his career isn't you know there's loads of time it might sound like I'm being melodramatic but right now things look like it's on a bit of a downward slope um but yeah that's how that match ended next up red velvet versus Tay Conti um Tay Conti was ringside with Anna Jay and Brandy Rhodes came out ringside with Red Velvet, still selling the fact she was angry with what had happened with Jade Cargill earlier on in the night. Um, I feel generally I was quite happy with this match. Um, I've just seen around on some circles online, people thought this was a bit of a middle of the road and all right match. So I thought it was a bit better than all right, personally. Obviously, um, I'm most familiar with Tay Conti for her time on NXT. Um, and Rod Velvet has really impressed me in recent weeks as well. And despite her actually losing in this match, um, I think Red Velvet is going to be the bigger star eventually of these guys. Um, there was a part in the match where Anna Jay wanted, I guess, Tay Conti to use the dark arts, um, tried to pass her a chair, a steel chair, but Tay Conti refused and she beat Red Velvet the good old honest way um, in the middle of the ring um, with just wrestling moves. Um, so Red Velvet didn't get the win here. However, like I said, she was pretty impressive in this match. Tay Conti, obviously very impressive. And, um, Anna Jay came back into the ring after she had won. And Tay Conti was like, you know, I didn't need, I didn't need to use a chair. I didn't need to cheat sort of thing. And Anna Jay was like, whatever. Gave her a hug, held up her arm. Still trying to get her to sign up to the Dark Order, to join the Dark Order. Um, but Yeah. It was, I th I, like I said, I think it was better than what people are giving it credit for. Um, right. So I've realized I've called something on this on this card, Match of the Night, and I haven't even got to Ray Phoenix versus Penta L Zero yet. So I might need to retract my <laughs> retract my earlier comment because this match was absolutely fantastic. But you know what? I, I'm going to stick with the bunkhouse match just because it was something different. And um, I think those guys aren't guys in prominent positions and they really done something excellent. Um, I, I, that's, I enjoyed that match. But because, you know, Penta and Ray Phoenix, you know you're always going to get a brilliant match out of them. It's not a surprise. And this wasn't anything over, over the top. It was just a very, very good match. What I really loved about this match is how these two were... It wasn't that kind of respectful brother versus brother match. They were treating each other like strangers. And Penta started it. Penta was ripping the mask of Ray Phoenix, which obviously for, you know, that culture, that is a massive disrespect. As if Penta's not wearing a mask himself. He's ripping Ray Phoenix's mask, his brother's mask off his face. Um, Eddie Kingston was on commentary and obviously he was selling the fact that Penta's his best friend and stuff like that. And he kind of was rooting for Penta to win. Um, Ray Phoenix got back into the ascendancy and he'd done the exact same thing, started ripping Penta's mask off his face. And I was thinking like, gosh, even when I, even when I saw Ray Phoenix's mask getting ripped off, I was thinking there must be a spare under the ring that they're going to pull out or something like that. But no. Half his head was on show. The same with Penta when his mask started getting ripped off. Um, and then, yeah, Penta, as the match finished, Penta was really in the ascendancy. Um, there was power drivers. There was a power driver, um, a Canadian destroyer to the outside, a power driver on the apron, and then a, a package power driver in the ring to win the match. Um, so Penta really dropped his brother on his head about three or four times in quick succession so penta wins the match and eddie kingston comes down to the ring um by the way guys i'm not doing this obviously i'm just doing brief kind of updates go and watch that match it was absolutely brilliant um eddie kingston comes down to the ring and eddie kingston's like yes my best friend won uh zero miero all that kind of stuff and um he cheekily very very cheekily um ray phoenix was just lying under the bottom rope he put his boot into Ray Phoenix's chest and like kicked him off the apron onto the floor. And I thought, hold on, mate. These guys are part of your family, you know? And yes, you might have your favorite, your best friend, but that's his brother. Just dispatched of Ray Phoenix like nothing. And that brought out the return of the bastard pack. It was brilliant to see him back in AEW. He's been missing for a very long time, obviously because of the whole pandemic thing, and he was stuck in England. Um, Pack came back and he was literally saying, you know, you thought that you would get rid of me, you thought you wouldn't see me again to Eddie Kingston. 
literally trying to go at Eddie Kingston, but referees and everyone, officials ran down and kind of got in the middle of them too. Um, didn't let it happen. Obviously, Pac was rolling with Ray Phoenix and Penta before Eddie Kingston came to the show. They had Death Triangle just before the pandemic um, hit. These guys were trying to get Death Triangle off the ground, basically. So, yeah, this is where th that relationship comes into play. It's going to be a really good story when it's told between these guys. Pac's obviously got a lot to prove, a lot to catch up on. Eddie Kingston is going to sink his teeth into yet another great feud like he just done with Moxley. Um so yeah, that is that's how the show ended. Really, really enjoyable, enjoyable dynamite show. Um, like I said, we got the return of Pac, we've got a teaser of Shaq. Um, it's gonna be really interesting to see what's gonna happen next week. Next week, we're gonna get Pac versus Blade, um, which I'm sure is gonna be a win for Pac. Um, but a lot of things kind of um warming up, and of course, we have um we saw uh, Kenny Omega, that's it, the number one contender. Kenny Omega is going to be taking on John Moxley for the AEW World Championship, and they've given us a date, the 2nd of December. So I'm sure that's probably going to be a stacked Dynamite show. Is Kenny Omega going to win the title on TV? Guys, what do you think? Put your comments down below. I'd love to hear what you think. That is the AEW review. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, please hit the thumbs up button if you enjoyed it. And if you're new here, welcome to the channel. Please subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell so you get notified every time I drop a new video. WrestleManiac UK signing out and I'll see you.